Hi everybody, thanks very much for tuning in. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name's Steve, I'm Steve Cullen, and my channel looks at everything fly tying, and a little bit of fly fishing thrown in for good measure. Um, I tend to focus on a lot of the UK flies, however, I do stuff that will suit around the world. Um, if you're a subscriber already, welcome back. Thanks for joining. So I'm going to tie this. It's a half hog. It's a half hog that's done really well for me in the reservoirs. Half hogs are usually associated with Scottish wild brown trout fishing. However, this little scamp um, is done really well for me on both Grafham and Pittsford. Uh, a bit of challenge to tie it, but certainly worth it, I feel. So let's crack on and tie it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a and I do this with quite a few dries. This is a old bit gold B100 Carmazan. This is a gold hook, and I like gold in this fly. They're not as strong as some of the grub hooks, however, excuse me, when you're fishing this fly, you should be fishing quite a soft tippet. I tend to fish this fly on its own. Most of the, you'll see half, half hogs fished as a team. This fish is well on its own, it brings fish up. I'm going to start with um, some red tine threads, just a old tine thread. A little bit behind the eye and work my way down the body. And my scissors back up to about there. And then I've got some red holographic. It works well in Claret, the original fly that I've seen. Now, who tied the original that I've seen that I really liked? This is a version of it. Oh God, his is a Claret. I'd put money on it. If it's no James Buse, it's James Simpson. It's one of, the, one of those boys up there. I can't remember which one, so apologies guys if you're watching this, whoever, whoever has seen it, but it was a Claret version. And it had a gold part. Mine's hasn't it? Mine's got copper. So I'm just coming down, no too far, and then back up the body. And I'm going to stick in a, a whip finish here. Like I say, it's a fiddly flight of tie, but it really is worth it. A little bit of super glue. I didn't bother with ribs. Uh, kind of defeats the purpose if you're ribbing it. So a little bit of super glue onto the the thread underbody. Now forgive me because I might move the the vise here. And I'm just going to come up in overlapping turns up the body. And because that super glue is there, it's solid. I could pretty much let go of that there without having to do my my securing. All I will do is I'll get this bloody thing a little bit of super glue on my finger so it's stuck. So as you can see, a really, really slim body. I've then got this stuff and it's quite a wide. It's a number 12 or a 3 64th of an inch. That can't even be right, can it? When I want to tie this in, this has got to be cheeks. So tie the blue side in, most of your flat wire uh, tinsels have got two sides, dual sided. This is blue in one, copper on the other. Take it quite far back. So that's my tag end there. Make sure that you've got enough to bring forward, otherwise you'll be scrabbling about in deer here trying to sort it. Same again on this side. So. That's my copper, that'll be my cheeks. Now the complicated part, because it's really fiddly. This is a clarity red, more clarity than red, dyed roe deer. So, there'll be a bit of dunting on the desk as I stack my, my fibres, so forgive me. So I'm just taking a little pinch at a time, make sure that I've got rid of any fibres in the bottom that'll stop it. 
stuck the fibres adhere as well. I'll give the volume and I'll just I've got my tips here. I don't have this very far back. It's basically covering the hook shank obviously. But what you want to do is do one, two wraps and pull it up. It stops it spinning. You don't want it to spin, it wants to sit on the top. Stanley knife, this is an alpha blade. Pull everything back. Like so any stray fibres there. And I've got a really rich, deep, one of my mates, Phil Varney dyed this for me, it's a really dark claret, I love it. And it's a good deer hair this as well. You want a really quite tight rope. I didn't bother with wax. If I do need it, then I'll use it, but I, I, I didn't always need it. Depends on the feather. So there's a, another clump of deer here. Just take your time with this. Everybody knows deer hair's fiddly. I'm trying to do this and keep my desk tidy. I'm a stickler for a tidy desk. So didn't go daft with large bunches, just take your time. It build it the wing up. That's a failure, some of that's fell out. Just gotta cut that again. That's better. Make sure you get the flu off the bottom of the, the deer here. same length, one, two, pull up, 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 bed that into the, the seals for me a blade. And on my third one, so this will be my third clump of deer here. Bear with me while I stock it. Any stray fibres, get rid of them. One, two, pull it up. Now, at this stage here, looking good, I'm going to come in and I'm just going to tidy this up a little bit. I'll get one more stack of deer here, but before I get the deer hair on, some black legs. You can't use claret to go with a fly. I like the contrast of black, uh, especially when a fish is looking up. So I'll get three or four one side. Make sure you're happy with this, just do a lock and turn. That's, that's better. Same again, we'll see your four. I try and get as even as I can. Just gotta turn the hook in the vise here. Make sure we've got everything the same length. Like so come in over the, the legs, my scissors, like I say he's fiddly but he is worth it, I promise. So this is my, my last little bit of um, deer hair coming up now, again a little bit of the claret. 
come through with your thread. So this is going to be my, my last little bit of deer here, so not too much. Flies like this take time, but having fished with them and having fished with the boys from up north, I know just how effective they can be. So I'm just taking some of the fibres away to make sure I'm not too much in this. This has got to be my last bit of the wing. The bulk is on that third tie, really. Again, one, two loops, pull up. That's it. My last cut. Careful not to cut into the he says, cutting it. And then you've got a bring. I'll do this side first. Make sure you didn't catch any deer hair or legs. You get your tag end tinsel and secure. That's that side. All I'll do is I'll put a secure and wrap in there. Didn't catch the gear here at this point. Turn it and I'm going to pull it up on this side. Away. Again, I'm going to stick a little quick finish there, and then just to finish it off, I will use if I can find the bloody stuff a little bit of wax in this bit here because this is the important bit. You create a little head with the the seals for take your thread back through it to secure. And then just tidy up some of these little bits and pieces. Then we have a finishing tool. And then my last little bit of this is to come in with uh Double brush and pull some of that seals fur back over the wing. And there he is. That's your red and copper half hog. What a fly it is. Uh, I like to fish this one on its own. Open water or weed beds, doesn't really matter. Fibres at the way, a tiny little spot. Of varnish or glue, whatever your fancy is, and there he is. A great fly. <laughs> to fish for both brownies and rainbows. I really hope you enjoyed that, folks. If you did, please be kind enough to subscribe to the channel. Take care. And bye-bye.